Hi guys, it's been over a year since I made one of these accessory videos for the little ZV-E10 and I figure because things change, accessories change, I might as well give you an update and also put affiliate links down below so that you can make me stinking rich. So let's talk about the accessories that help little Dougie shine. This is not one of them. So no one is sponsoring this video. No one has paid me to say anything. No one ever pays me to say anything. And uh, I actually bought this a little while ago because I wanted to film something out in the snow. And uh, I would not use this in the elements. You know, it's not probably going to protect your camera from a monsoon. But what it's actually pretty good at is keeping the sun off your camera. So if it's a bright sunny day and you can't get yourself some shade, you can just put this little umbrella in the hot shoe. Actually works pretty well. Did I just make this an actual item that you should get? All right, I'll leave links below. But let's get to our first real item and it is this cage from Small Rig. So in order to put it on, you just pull this magnet off on the bottom there. I love that they have a little key included with a magnet. And then you have this nice cage on it right here with this fantastic grip because uh, the grip on the ZV-E10 is quite small. So a lot of people think it's too small to hold and this thing makes it so comfortable. Very beefy grip now and a really, really nice texture. You got to feel it. Super nice. Now make sure you get the updated one. I have the original small rig one and it kind of blocks the uh, hot shoe. If you want to use hot shoe accessories, you can't really do it with this guy. But the uh, new version of it, which is I think is the only one they sell now, is uh, has a little cutout for the hot shoe. So no worries there. I just have the original version. So if you ever want to trick out your little Dougie like I have done in videos where you put on matte boxes and big lenses and battery packs so it can look very impressive and go all day, it always starts with a cage. And this is the cage for the ZV-E10. Monitors, this is the Portkey's PT-5-2 and if you want to see your little ZV-E10 in a studio setting, you want something better than the LCD screen and uh, or if you're in the field, if you're shooting somewhere, you're gonna want an external monitor. I find this is a great quality touchscreen monitor that costs about 120 bucks and it's more than just a good monitor. It comes with everything that you need and usually at that price point, you don't get it. it comes in this hard shell case with these egg crate things. And uh, this here is the sunshade that you can stick on the monitor. And it also has all of the cables that you're gonna need, regular HDMI, micro HDMI, which you need, of course, for the ZV-E10 and a little swivel for the uh, cold shoe there. It's just, it's great that it's all included for that price and the monitor works well. It's the one that I think you should start with for the ZV-E10. Now, speaking of being able to see things, check this out right here. This is the Camerar, spelled with a K though, not a C, uh, LCD viewfinder. And it is uh, the CVF1, I believe. And you just hold it up and you put it there. This one actually has bungee cords, so you can strap it to the camera so that you don't have to hold it up there. But most of them that you buy, they don't have the bungee cords. And uh, really, that's I just hold it up when I need to use it. Maybe if you're gonna go around all day shooting, but anyway, you know the LCD screen is not the greatest. So in bright sunshine, if you're having trouble composing your video or your photos, you grab this little Caramar, Car Caramar, uh, CVF1 or whatever LCD viewfinder. These things are pretty inexpensive as well. I always keep it in the bag. It is uh, collapsible, you see that? And then you just store it away, very lightweight. It's actually built pretty nicely and it works really, really well. Now I had this in my last accessories video, but it's gotta come out again right here. And that is the, I almost hit myself. That is the uh, gray card right here. You want, you can, it can help you set your exposure. It can help you set your white balance. And I'm often setting my white balance manually, which is quite easy to do on the ZV-E10. This thing costs 10 bucks. Just go get yourself, look how small that packs up. Go get yourself one of these things. You always need something to help you manually white balance and also help you set exposure. And oh, there's one more function it has too. If you're doing manual focus, then uh, you can wait until this thing gets in focus, this little target, and then you know that you're in focus. ND filters, sunglasses for your lens. You're gonna be out in the bright sunshine and you want that blurry background, you're gonna need a neutral density filter. I like the variable neutral density filters from KNF Concept, the nano ones. They are excellent value because they are great quality, but they are quite 
affordable and uh, no weird color cast. It has hard stops as well, so you don't get that X pattern when you don't expect it. And uh, make sure that you buy the right filter size for your lens. Like uh, this one here is 55 millimeter filter thread. It fits on my 11 millimeter Sony, and I bought it specifically for the 11 millimeter 1.8 because that's a lens I use a lot for vlogging. Now, a lot of people like to buy bigger ND filters and use step up rings. But on a lens that's wide, like this 11 millimeters, it's going to see the step up rings. So that's why I just bought it to fit right on to the glass right there so that it doesn't see the step up rings. You won't get any of that weird vignetting. So um, I also bought one for my 67 millimeter filter thread because I have a bunch of lenses that have a 67 millimeter filter thread. Get yourself an ND and get that blurry background even outside. Microphones. Now I like little lapel mics grab and go when I'm out and about with the ZV-E10 and either of these two are great. This is the Hollyland Lark M1. This is the Comica Vimo C and uh, they're both great. The Comica is probably a little bit easier to use for most people because it has a uh, LCD screen on it. So look at the size of these transmitters right there. So you just clip them to your shirt and then you're good to go. As soon as you take them out of the box, I almost dropped it. As soon as you take them out of the box, they are connected. It's the same thing with uh, the Hollyland. So I'll just take out one of the Hollyland ones and I'll clip it to the other side and see there's the Hollyland. Very comparable in size, very comparable in quality. The Hollyland is a little bit better at my loud voice like if sometimes i clip mics because i shout too much hollyland's a little more forgiving with that but like i said the comica is easier to use because it has that screen so you know what all the settings are whereas you know the uh, hollyland it just has a series of lights that you have to use and uh, you get used to it and i just i use the default settings anyway so i don't worry too much about it but still you know either are fine Comic is probably easier for most. Now, the only problem that some people have with these microphones is that you can't plug a lapel mic into the actual transmitter itself. So if you want a small little profile of one of these lapel mics that you can plug into a 3.5 millimeter jack, then I would actually recommend the Comica uh, Boom XD Pro. That is just a fantastically full featured set of microphones where, so it comes with two transmitters and one receiver, a really nice screen, but it also has internal recording and it has a safety track. I don't have it with me right now because one of my buddies has it and uh, the safety track just saved him. He, uh, he almost ruined all of his audio but he was using the safety track. Hey Tim, uh, safety track. That's why they call it safety. Saved you. And that comes in much cheaper than the Rode Wireless Go 2 or the DJI mic. Now, those two also have internal recordings, but not only are they more expensive, you have to buy the, the lapel mics separately, which is again another cost. Now, if unlimited money is your thing, the DJI or the Rode and the lapel mics might be the way to go. But if you're looking for a really great value, the Comica Boom XD Pro. Now, in terms of the studio microphone, what I like to do is boom a shotgun overhead. I use a cheap mic stand from Amazon. I got the idea from Curtis Judd. I just, just juts out over here. And then I got a 3.5 millimeter extender cable and I will right from the microphone right into the ZV-E10. And Bob is your uncle. So this one here is the Rode Video Mic NTG. Now this is a great mic and sounds great, but you do have to use it on the minus 20 pad if you're me because it peaks a lot on the normal volume level. So I put on the minus 20 pad and then I just turn up the gain a little bit and it works great. Now, if you don't want to mess around with that, you could go with the uh, Deity D3 Pro or maybe even something like the Rode Go 2, which is also a great option. Now, because the ZV-E10 is such a fun travel camera, a lot of people like to use it for vlogging, we're going to need one of these. This one here is a little tripod and this one's from Ulanzi. I love it so much. It's built like a tank. It's all metal and look at that. It extends out further. So if you wanted to get a little extra reach, of course, it has, has a regular tripod legs right here but here is the piece de resistance check this out look at this quick release quick release plate the f38 system it's a whole system that i'm just about to talk about i'm sure you guys know if you watch the channel at all but you not only can put it on your little tripod here's my f38 big tripod this thing oh boy oh boy do i love 
this tripod, my favorite tripod of all time, been using it solidly for more than a year, and I just took it to West Africa. It is built so well, it's two pounds, all carbon fiber. It's not the cheapest travel tripod in the world, but it is worth every penny in my opinion. I absolutely love the F38 tripod from Ulanzi. They do have an actually uh, another version, which is a bit cheaper and is more dedicated towards video. And that's this F38 video tripod. As you can see, it has a fluid head right here, but it still has that same quick release system. Just, I put these plates on the bottom of all of my cameras. I'm just switching them in and out. It's so great. Now this one, like I said, has the fluid head and it's a bit cheaper. And the legs actually, it's a faster thing to take off instead of the leg switches. It's great in its own right. Um, and so you'd be happy with either. I just like the really small profile of the uh, F38, the one without the fluid heads. I don't use the fluid head a ton when I'm out in the field. And, uh, but if you do use a fluid head a ton, then go get this one. But the F38 system doesn't stop there, of course. Here is the backpack clip, so you can just put that on and go on your merry way. And if you're one of those people who, uh, like me, had the Peak Design capture clip, no worries. Yulanzi actually sells a special plate that is uh, F38 on one side and Peak Design capture clip on the other side. I don't know if you can read that, but it says for PD capture. So you can just take that and then put it in to your Peak Design capture clip right there. They got you covered. And these plates are also Arca Swiss compatible, so you can just put those into tripods that have Arca Swiss, screw them in. They also have these base plates. You can put the base plates on anything and turn those things into quick release things. I never stop talking about these because I love them so much. They've increased my efficiency by thousands of percent. I was pretty inefficient before to be fair, but still I love them and I just, and everyone I tell about who buys them, they say the same thing. They love them so much. Go get yourself a bunch of the F38 quick release stuff. Wonderful. Oh, check this next one out. This is a brand new product. I actually haven't even reviewed. They just released this, but uh, they gave it to me a while ago. So I've been using the hell out of it because I was traveling so much. And uh, this is a card holder, but not just a card holder. See, there's my Sony Tough Card. We'll talk about that in a second. But uh, also, if I just pull off on the side here, look at this thing. You see that? That is a USB-C cable because this is also a high-speed card reader. So a card reader and a card holder all in one in a rugged little rubber case that is uh, dust and moisture resistant. And look at this. And it also has a little pin here. So uh, in case you need, you're trying to get an SD card out of a phone or something like that, and you just snap it down there. Oh my goodness. And you saw my Sony Tough card right there. And those are the only cards that I can recommend these days. And I'll tell you why. Basically, uh, I'm not a Sony ambassador or anything. If you guys know of another Tough card, let me know down below. It's just that I was using the SanDisk Pro Extremes and they never failed me. They, I didn't have any corrupt footage or anything like that. But after years of heavy use, probably about a year I get out of them, just taking them in and out of different cameras. I review a lot of cameras in and out of different computers, different card readers. They tend to break apart. I actually broke one off in a Nikon Z30 when I was doing that review. And the wonderful people over at B&H were nice enough not to charge me for the repair, but they did need to repair the camera. And that was the day I was like, you know what? That's it for me. I know Sony Tough Cards cost a little bit more, but it's worth it. And you don't have to get these fancy V90 ones when you're talking about the ZV-E10. You can get the V60, which are definitely cheaper than the V90. Still not super cheap, but worth it when you're breaking cameras with your SD card. Yeah. Gimbals. Now, as you know, the Sony ZV-E10 has the gyro data, so you can run through Catalyst Browse and get that very smooth footage. But it's extra steps and extra work, and the actual stabilization in the camera is not the greatest, so a lot of people like using the gimbals. Plus, there are times gimbals are just appropriate, and look at the size of this one. This is the Zhiyun Crane M2S. So if you are using the ZV-E10, the kit lens, the 11 millimeter, and uh, or the Sony, 10 to 20 or the Sony 15, then uh, you can definitely use the Crane M2S. In fact, that is what I use when I'm using any of those lenses. And since the Sony 11 is generally my vlogging lens, I often use the Crane M2S. There is one more gimbal though that will cover you for more. I mean, there's lots of gimbals that will cover you for more, but one more that I would recommend highly for the ZV-E10, and that is the Crane 
M3S. There's a, the M3S is just an upgrade of the M3. The M3 is still great if you want to go get that one, but the M3S is just gives you more functionality. You can use Bluetooth to uh, turn the camera on and off, like start and stop for recording. You can also connect cords and have different functionality with the ZV-E10, but look at this one. Nice and small and compact and sturdy and way more features than the M2S. It is more expensive, but it covers you for a lot more lenses and it also covers you for a lot more functions. But those are the two gimbals that I recommend most for the uh, ZV-E10. Now the DJI Ronin RS3 Mini is also a very good camera for the ZV-E10. The only reason I recommend it less is because it's a big, a bit bigger, a big bigger, a bit bigger than this guy right here. For something to take your camera around, I still like the Think Tank mirrorless mover. I really, I've had this for years and I just don't see any reason to change. I put it on my side, like my little man purse, that it is, take my ZV-E10 and a few lenses. Sometimes I take one of those crane gimbals along with it. It fits plenty, even though it's, you know, nice and small profile. And when it comes to the bigger backpacks, the only one that I've really been using is this uh, Visgo backpack. And I reviewed this a little while ago and I just, I really like it. For the ZV-E10, you just, it has this big spot up here that I didn't think, I thought was a bit of a waste. There should be more sections for cameras and all the camera sections are down here. But the truth is I took the camera and a bunch of lenses and I put it all down here. And then up top, I put all kinds of accessories and microphones and all this other thing. And then I just uh, put on this magnet and I was good to go. I had my Ulanzi tripods in the side there. I had my MacBook, um, my M1, MacBook Air, I had that in the pouch on the side. This was a really great backpack. Now you can get cheaper ones. There's ones from newer or low pro. And uh, so I'm not, I'm not Mr. Camera Bag, but this is the one that I've been using. Oh, it also stands up vertically when you put it down. And I like that a lot. Batteries, now the battery life is not bad on the ZV-E10, but it's nice to have a spare battery or two. And this is something I've actually changed my mind on. I used to recommend third party batteries. Uh, I have one right here. This is the culprit of why I now recommend you get Sony's official, what do they call again? The NPFW50. And uh, the reason is because most of these were okay. And then a couple of them just weren't. And so they'd be at 50% power and then they just shut off. And uh, I didn't like that. The idea that I couldn't trust my batteries. And so I bite the bullet now when I need another battery for my Sony cameras, then I pay the extra bit of money and I get the official one from Sony. And it serves me a lot better than having batteries I can't rely on that might crap out. Now, one thing I still don't buy officially from Sony is their official charger. I use the third party battery chargers. They cost like 10 bucks and they work well. They charge the Sony batteries and that's all I need. Speaking of power, get yourself a power bank, something that can deliver power over USB-C because there are times you're recording, you start, it's starting to trickle down. You don't know if you're going to make it. Plug it in to the old USB-C power bank and you're good to go. Save my bacon more than once. Let's say you're streaming for long periods of time. Get yourself one of these guys. So those are the accessories that I have been using heavily for the ZV-E10 and they have made my life a whole lot easier and hopefully they can make your life a bit easier. Anyway, thanks for watching. We'll talk to you again soon. Okay, bye-bye.